start recording. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, let me know if you can see me and hear me. Uh, let me put the text chat as well in there. Okay, and this thing is recording this time early. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, uh, again, uh, let me know if you can hear me. Sure can. Excellent. Very good. All right. So I hope everybody had a good weekend. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We're still, I got to figure out how to make this admit automatically instead of putting people in the waiting room because I'm going back and forth. Um, okay. All right. So um, yeah. So I have an example we're going to go by. So this is our agenda today. Uh, so we're going to look at a common emitter circuit. We're going to break it down, look at the analysis in DC that, at, this, at this stage, uh, figure out what the load line is going to look like, and what the operating point is going to be. So it's kind of what we've done last time, but we're going to slow down. But in the meantime, this is going to give us a chance to do all of this also again with the tool that I suggested we use for the course, which is LT Spice. And this gives us a chance to use LT Spice for a custom transistor based on the requirements that I have for the circuit, okay? Um, and specifically, because when we go to LT Spice, we're gonna see it has a database of transistors you can pick. But the one that I wanted based on the characteristics of my calculation is not going to be in there. So what do you do? And then how do you work around it? And then we get to see within the same circuit, what if you put a different transistor? What happens? What happens to the operating point? I mean, so that way you have a good idea for that type of circuitry. And specifically what I'm going to show you today, it's very dependent on the type of transistor you use. In other words, is there a way in the future to make that less dependent? or you have better control, for example, over beta, specifically since I described that the, uh, the uh, a transistor is really a current system, right? So it's a current uh, control device. And we get to see that again today, um, uh, even clearer. Um, so well, let's get started. So let me draw a circuit. Uh, so we're gonna share my screen and I'm gonna draw a circuit we're going to do the calculations together so we get to see how that's done. Um, so that means we're going to figure out the currents and the voltages at different points, specifically the ones that identify the QS endpoint, right? So let's do that. So let me just go ahead and close a few things here. Just clean up my screen. Uh, this one here, minimize it. Oops, not maximize it, minimize it. And let's go ahead and share my screen. Okay, uh, let me know you're seeing my screen. In the meantime, I'm looking at the moon. Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna pull my tablet and we're gonna draw a circuit. And then we're gonna use the same circuit and we're gonna put it in, uh, in the simulator. So you get to see how the simulator works, how to set it up, how to set up values, how to measure those values and so on and so forth. Uh, move this out of the way. So let's say we have this circuit. And here's your transistor, straight to ground. And then So we have RC, RB, again, collector, emitter, base, okay? And then we have VCC. All right, so everybody can see the drawing? Yep. Okay, good, excellent. 
All right, so let's put some values for this. Let's say VCC equals 12 volts. Okay. Uh, let's say RC is 2.2 kilo ohm. And let's say RB is 240 kilo ohm. And let's say this transistor Q has a beta of 50, okay? Um, this here, we're looking for the DC bias. Eventually what's gonna happen is we're gonna be looking at the AC component, which would be, this would be VN. And then if it's a common emitter, you're gonna come out of this way and V out, AC will be here. And then we'll worry about also the AC load line. So we're not doing any of that. So we're really concerned with DC. So everybody give me a check mark. You understand that I'm, this is a partial circuit. We're not considering the AC component. We're just considering the DC component, right? Okay, good. So it's a very basic analysis we need to do. So we know that this would have a current IB that would go through here, would have a current IC that would go through here, and it would have a current IE that would go through here. And at the same time, it would have a voltage drop VCE, which is very important to indicate in what state this transistor is. So it's really a good indicator. Uh, what do I mean by that? So VCE, I, you know, for me, is my gauge in a way. Because it's very hard to measure currents. You get to break things up. It's much easier to measure voltages with a, a multimeter on a circuit. And if I'm measuring VCE and I'm comparing it typically to the source, I can tell pretty much in general, not always, where it's at. If it's closer to VCC, then it's cut off. If it's closer to zero, then it's the transistor in saturation. We get to see that today by me using different transistors that have different betas and see the effect on the circuit, okay? So we know that beta is the relationship between IC and IB. So we know that IC is equal to beta IB, right? So whatever IB is, IC will be that much, 50 times bigger, okay? Good, so now, if this transistor is in operation, if it's working, we also know there is a voltage VBE right here that will typically be 0 0.7 volts or 0 0.6 something volts because it's the forward bias of a transistor of a, a diode junction there. And you're measuring the voltage against that diode that is forward biased. Remember, I drew a bunch of diodes to rep, kind of represent what a transistor might look like. And we could see between the emitter and the base, we have a forward bias diode. And in that case, right, the voltage drop against a forward bias uh, diode, especially if it's silicon, will be around 0 0.7, right? Uh, excellent. So now let's do some calculations and let's figure out what the load line is going to look like, where the QS endpoint is going to be. Uh, so this will be a really, again, a good review of your previous class, but the transition to this is to start doing some evaluations because you're going to get to a point where if you were to design this, how would you pick your components? Okay, so that's something this course tries to cover from a design point of view. But first, you need a baseline. You need to understand the behavior of such a circuit, and we're going to investigate that right now. And then after that, it's a matter of, okay, what do I tweak to obtain certain specific results that I want uh, based on the design requirements that are ahead of me, okay? Okay, so for this, um, let me establish what I'm looking for. So let me just draw a line or a diagram here. And this would be VCE versus IC. So we're looking at the forward region, right? And what I'm gonna be looking for is where would the load line for this transistor look like, like this? 
And what is Q going to be? Okay, Q the QSN. Uh, let me remove here this Q here so we don't confuse these two. I'm going to call this one transistor for now, or my transistor, or my BJT, bipolar junction transistor. It's this one right here. I'm going to use the same naming convention for the simulation. Since I'm going to have a custom transistor that has a beta of 50, that's all, OK? So that way we don't confuse it. Q is an actual point that has uh, VCEQ and an ICQ, which means based on what we're seeing here, we should obtain this and we should obtain this now based on what you're seeing here. Uh, to get these extreme points right here, cut off and the point of saturation, we can actually do these calculations real quick. These two points, we can find them right now by looking at this side of the circuit. Okay. Well, to do that, you will have to assume one position or the other. Either the transistor is saturated or cut off. Anything in between in this region right here means the transistor is in operation as an amplifier, not as a switch. So we're looking, look, going to look at it as a switch, right? So it, uh, what, what will be the value of IC if it's saturated? What will be the value of VCE if it's cut off, right? Why? Because let's look at the cutoff, cutoff conditions. Cutoff conditions means IC equals zero. That means there's no current going through here. Everybody give me a check mark and understand. That means the transistor is not allowing any current to go through, okay? If IC is equal zero, this means VRC is equal to zero. There's no voltage drop against the resistor. However, that means I have an opening. So where the transistor was, we basically have an opening. And VCC is right here. Do you agree this would be an equivalent circuit of cutoff? This would be the collector. This would be the emitter. Good. So if you put your voltmeter here, what do you measure? Uh, I can, let me put the uh, text chat. Let me see if I can do that. There you go. You can type it up in the text chat. I have it below here. I just brought it up. What would you measure? If you put a voltmeter here, you'd measure VCC. Excellent. Excellent. So this would be so VCE, this means here, VCE will be equal to VCC. Oops. Let me just clean it up. So VCE will be equal to VCC. Everybody in agreement? So in other words, VC for this particular case will be 12 volts, right? So that means my cutoff here, this point here, let's call it P of cutoff, has two, uh, two coordinates, right? An X and a Y, just like any point where X is equal to zero and this one is equal to 12 as coordinates, right? So this would be 12 volts or VCC or 12 volts that point. So that means basically what you have, I'm sorry, the other way around. The X is the horizontal. That's the voltage. So that's 12 and the Y is zero. Everybody give me a check mark. Okay, in terms of the coordinates of a point, right? X, Y. Okay, good. So that would be the point. Saturation. So this was cut off. 
and I think it's one T, not two T's. Just um, I will save this picture when we're done and upload it again as part of the lesson. Everybody give me a check mark. So instead of clearing it up, just like we're doing on the board, so it's part of your notes as well. Okay. All right. So for saturation, what do we do? We assume this time, notice the point is right here. So uh, P of saturation, again, it has an X and a Y, but this time X is zero and Y is going to be equal to some value. So that's what we're gonna look for, right? So in that case, VCE is equal to zero volts. You agree? If VCE is equal to zero volts, let's look at the VCC circuit here. Here's RC, which means we're going straight to ground. Right? So we have a short on VCC, on VCE here. Does that make sense? Which means now we have an RC, an IC current. This implies that IC of saturation will be equal to VCC divided by RC. And in this case, that would be 12 volts divided by 2.2. .2. I don't have my calculator with me here. Uh, hang on a second. Tanya, you have my calculator? I just took my wife's calculator. I'm not sure how it operates. Here you go. All right, it's got a date. It's cute. Okay, so let's clear that. So we've got 12 volt divided by 2.2. So that's 5.45 milliamp. So I see of saturation. 5.45 milliamp. All right, so. Well, that sets boundaries for us. Don't you agree? So we know that IC can never be greater than 5.45 milliamp anytime we evaluate the circuit based on these components. Do you agree? That's also a good delimiter that tells us the scope of the values we can obtain for IC. Yeah, make sure we don't go over that. Or when yeah, we're doing and you can okay. based on what components you have here. Do you agree? Considering you stay at 12 volts, <laughs> okay? And considering you have the same resistors. So, and the same transistor. So no matter what you do, you're not gonna get more than 5.45. So it's a matter of beta now of that transistor to get you there or not, do you agree? Uh, we would like to be less than 5.45. So we know that current is critical. If we reach that level, we're going to saturation. We are at saturation at 545. If we're like, let's say at 4.9 milliamp, we're really getting close to uh, saturation. Relative so, to, yep. yeah, so, so because IE and IC are nearly equal, does that mean that we're gonna be trying to uh, get IE bumped up as high as possible to then force cutoff? or the no, force saturation in mm -hmm. RC? No, no. So let me, let me go back to the objective of this circuit. It's an evaluation right now. We're not going to try to manipulate anything yet. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. We will. My manipulation will be on the, based on the transistor. I'm going to switch transistors based on the same value resistors here and the voltage supply and see what happens. So you get to see based on the choices of components you pick that have different betas, that you might end up always in saturation. You wonder why your circuit is not working. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if you want to keep that same transistor that has a beta of 50 and you get a coalescent point that works, but you want to manipulate the, 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 the point to go up or down, then you could change RB or RC or put a feedback resistor on RE. We're going to get to that 
later on. So those will be different ways to handle with this. So this time you keep the transistor, but you manipulate everything around it. Right now, our scenario will be based on this circuit. I'm going to just simply change the transistor and see what happens when we go to the simulator. So first we're establishing a baseline just to make sure how is this circuit supposed to work based on these characteristics, based on this transistor being at 50. Later on, we can go with transistor that have less or more and see what happens, you agree? Okay, all right, so great. So we've got that. So we know that this now is X is zero volt, but Y will be 5.45 milliamp for that point. Okay, so now we're concerned about Q. Q is where is the operating point at this stage based on these values as we speak, okay? So how do we do this? We, we could do a few things. Uh, we could find IB since we know, and that will allow us to find IC. So we could start with that. So usually I have the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I like to label what I'm doing. Where am I with the transistor? On the left-hand side, I'm gonna apply Kirchhoff to figure out what IB is. So what is, here's my I, what is it, what is it I'm seeing? Here's my I right here. What is it I'm seeing on the left-hand side? I'm seeing VCC, I'm seeing RB, and let's call this point here B here, or VB if you want. And so here's a point B here, and then ground. This is what I'm seeing. And I'm seeing a voltage here, VBE, right here. So VB will be equal to VBE here in this case. Now that's not gonna be true if we put uh, 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 a resistor here at the emitter. If somebody mentioned manipulating IE, for example, if you wanted to do something like that. It's a totally different circuit. We'll, we'll deal with that. So right now, do you agree that from here to here, I have VCC? So what is the voltage against the resistor? VCC minus the drop on the resistor. Excellent. And that will lead to the current IB. Do you agree? We know that IB in that case will be equal to VRB, the, the, resist, the voltage on top of that resistor, divided by RB. And you mentioned that VRB is the difference of VCC minus VBE divided by RB. And that would be 12 volts minus 0 0.7 divided by RB, which happens to be 240 10 to the third, right? So let's go ahead and do the calculation for this. And all right, this has solar stuff. So let me see if I can get it over here. So we got 12 minus 0 0.7 divided by, what was it, 240? Okay, so 47 microamps, approximately. Uh, it shows 47.08, 47.08 microamp. Okay, is everybody with, with me so far? Okay, um, later on, once you get used to transistors and transistor circuitries, Values like this will start making sense or not. You know? So if this was 47 milliamp, then I got a problem. <laughs> Think about it. If I see if saturation is going to be 545, 5.45, right? IB can never, ever be at that level. Something is wrong. You agree? You have short somewhere. So if you're doing some measurements and you know that I see if saturation should be this, and you're getting an IB of, let's say, 47 milliamp in your calculation, you did something wrong. 
Everybody understand the scale here? Yep. Good. Good. So you always, you know, you, you need to know when you're getting results, do they make sense? Okay. Uh, do, uh, relative to where you were, the environment you're in. It's not going to be obvious if this is your first time around transistors and transistor circuitry. It comes with time and you develop this. Uh, and then you, you'll have a keen eye for these because you know what to expect, the, the ranges and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, scale of things. So now we got this. Now I know this is correct. So great. So can we find IC? Well, we know that IC is beta IB. So that's 50 times. 47.08, 10 to the minus six. So let's go ahead and do a calculation of that. That's 50 times 47.08, oops, 0 0.08. Uh, I don't know how to use her calculator really good. So 50 times, you gotta be careful. 47.08. Okay, so I get 2354. Okay, that's 2.35 million. So that's 2.35 million. Well, now that's good. 2.35 million is less than 5.45. It's about halfway. That's what. That's ICQSN. So you know the QSN point here, right? Uh, has a VCE Q and an ICQ right here. This IC that I just calculated is ICQ. Does that make sense? Because we're not looking at the stage where we're either at cutoff or saturation. We're looking at it as is. What is IC? As it stands, that's ICQ based on that. So we see now that ICQ here is 2.34 or 35 milliamp. Which is the same as IE, right? Yeah, yeah. For, for you... circuits like these, um, I'll show you the relationship between IC and IB, okay? Uh, yes, it most a lot of times in approximations, we could say that IE is approximately equal to IC. Why? Because really in reality, IE, and this is the real deal here, is equal to IC plus IB. This is basic Kirchhoff. So there is a difference. Now in terms of scale, right? Yeah, so if you're comparing 47 microamp versus 235 milliamp, at a beta of 50, that's a 50 times scale. It could be negligible. And especially when you have transistors that have beta of 100, 200. Does that make sense? Yeah, when I was doing one of the labs, we had like a beta of 250 something. Right. And it was like, I could barely read any difference, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Has everybody seen that? And, and we get to see it when, when I do the uh, simulation. It's going to be as if we're taking the circuit now back to the lab to prove any of these points. And then we can manipulate things around because when you're in the lab, you start experimenting. And that's what we're going to be doing. But you need to have a guide as to what is it. So we're not all over the planet, all over the board. So we need today's objectives. I'm going to switch transistors that have different betas. Does that make sense? And uh, time permitting, then we can go back and say, okay, let me keep back my transistor and let's start tweaking RB or RC and see what happens, right? And then we get to see that QS and point moving up and down, depending where you want it. If you keep RC, you can manipulate RB to move the QS and point wherever you want. Now, if you change RC, your load line will shift completely in a different place. So keep that in mind, what kind of manipulation you intend to do. Okay. All right. So now we've got this. So can we say what VCEQ is? So let's look at it again, logically from the right-hand side, right? On this side. So I'm looking at it. Here's my eye. 
and I'm looking at a circuit where VCC is here. I've got RC. When I see my eyes, really, I have a multimeter and I'm looking. And here's the collector. And here's the emitter. And we already know what ICQ is. So that means that would give me the VRC drop voltage here. So we know that, right? It would be basic Ohm's law. And we're, we want to know what VCE is, question mark. So VCEQ to be precise. So that would be VCC minus VRC. Do you agree? At any time. That is true, right? Basic Kirchhoff law. Uh, basically, you know, you, you're looking at this node, this circuit is really equivalent to something like this, right? So if you're familiar with Kirchhoff by seeing it in this manner, so this would be VCC. And this would be VRC. This would be VCE or VCEQ. And again, plus minus. And then you would have a current IC going through in this map, right? So the key here is, so this is how you come up with this, right? So you could look at it this way or you could look at it this way, traditional um, uh, uh, loop here, but in our case, we could see it this way from ground to here, from this point to this point. If I put my multimeter, I'll get VCC. From this point to this point, I'll get the voltage drop against RC. If I put my meter probes right there, and which will indicate that, hey, you know, if you have that, so it's VCC minus ICQ times RC. Right, so this would be VRC is this value here. So VCEQ will be equal to 12 minus 2.35, 10 to the minus third times, what's RC, 2.2, 10 to the third, can get rid of this. And that would be, Twelve. Let's do the other side first. Two point thirty-five times two point two. This calculator is weird, so next time I'll bring mine thirty-five times two point two. Minus 12, okay, 6.83 volts. So this would be VCEQ So that takes us to here, where this is 6.83 volts, right? So this point right here is 6.83 volts which is less than VCC. And this point right here is our 2.35 million, right? So that, that should be sufficient for the analysis, the DC analysis of the circuit. Is everybody comfortable in the speed here in which we're moving? That's and a good how we're Yes, we're good? Yep. Excellent, excellent. So I hope this was also a good review for the previous semester when you took your, uh, your transistors or... Now let's see this in a simulator, right? So we're gonna use the same circuit. So I am going to first save this. And I'm so also as, as just a small question for these um, common emitter ones, mm -hmm. 
So is calculating is evaluating these uh, beta dependent? This will be beta dependent, and we're going to have to prove that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just that like the homework that we did was on voltage dividers, and it seems that you know at least to some extent that they are not voltage dependent or beta yeah. dependent. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, beta dependent. Right, right. We get to see that as well. Does that yeah, make that sense? That was part of the confusion earlier. Yeah, yeah. We get to see that again, right? Okay. Uh, cool. So, and with Ari, with the, you mean the one with that had Ari as well? Do you agree? Uh, both having RE and also a R1 device. and R2 on the base side. Right. Because we're going to find later on, if we're building circuits, and you have an inventory issue. <laughs> Does that make sense? Inventory issue means what transistors do you really have in the shop? Is this starting to make sense now? We yeah, still so we want to find out how to make all of them work because they all can work. It's just that they work differently. Exactly. So, but we understand the basic characteristics. We we could we could uh, leverage out of any transistor we have in the shop. So it's just a matter of dressing it up in a way where we can discount one of the characteristics that can throw everything out. And uh, so again, it's part of the design. That's why you're here. <laughs> okay. So we're really going to be doing engineering work versus technical work or technician work. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's where you become a MacGyver in circuitry. You know, you try to figure out, okay, what do I do with what I have, right? And uh, where do I insert the clothespin? So, you know, to stop the bomb from going off. Basically, that's what you're going to be doing with circuitry. It's very similar. So let me save this into the desktop so I don't forget. And I'm going to call it DC by 05. Sure, why not? Uh, it's a TIFF file. Can everybody open a TIFF file? It's just like you can convert it to JPEG if you need to, once I send it up to you, okay? So it's an image file, so it should be fine. All right, so now let's go ahead and pull out LT Spice. So now I can get my keyboard back down here. All right, everybody give me a check mark that you're seeing my LT Spice coming up. Right here. And I'm going to do start new blank schematic. Okay. Uh, again, I'm in a Mac, so the interface is going to be slightly different. Okay. Uh, there are tons of tutorial how to use LT Spice in a Mac. As a matter of fact, I've uploaded, um, let me just go over here. I don't know why it's doing this. Uh, I've uploaded, let me go to dashboard here. Under the course, or just so you know, under EL250, under discussion, uh, notice I have an AC analysis with LT Spice. I have DC analysis review and transistors, how they work, okay? Now, transistor, how they work. Uh, these are not my videos. These are basically introduction to what transistors are. So under discussion, you have these. Now, these are my videos and so the DC analysis. So this here, if you click here, EL150 base content. So in case you really want to get back to basics and understand how to do Thevenet, Norton, substitution, Nodal, Millman, Mesh, Superposition. I have examples and I did videos on these. So everybody give me a check mark. Later on, you're going to need to be able to analyze using any of these methods. So if you need a refresher or review, uh, these are good videos to look at. Uh, this, these were based on some examples I did in the previous EL150 Spring 2020. I think there are a couple students in here that took this course with me, okay? Uh, so I kept the recording and everybody's welcome to it, okay? So this will be a good review for 
how to do Kirchhoff, how to do Tamnet, how to do Norton, et cetera. So you're comfortable with that sort of thing. So you have to be nimble in that area. So if, if you have doubts, go to that DC analysis review and get into that. The AC analysis with LT spice here, I simply used RLC circuits right here, as you can see. Uh, so using LT spice, so you could see um, how I do an AC analysis or transient analysis to be more specific because you have time in which this uh, works and you wanna evaluate the, either the frequency response of this thing as I step through the impedance and change it or things of that nature. So this is really, really good stuff to see how you could use LT spice and tweak some things to obtain uh, various characteristics. Notice there are no transistors here. We're gonna be doing that in our course, okay? Uh, so what I'm gonna be doing throughout the semester is I'm gonna be recording uh, videos related to what we're doing, just like we're doing here today. But these will be separate, not the ones that I do in the class. And I'll upload it here as well, so it'll be a good review uh, for you. So now everybody see what I'm doing and how uh, to, to, to do this. So under that. So let me go back to LT Spice, and I'm going to go to Start New Schematic, and I get this. Let me make it a little bigger here. Now in Windows, it's going to this is going to look slightly different. So I can in uh, in a Mac is nice. I can do everything with my mouse. So notice my menu is very very thin. There's not much. If you're doing this in a Windows environment, which I will next time, uh, because I have to do that by using VMware Fusion, which is a virtual machine, except my problem is my license expired, so I couldn't do a Windows-based uh, view here. So I've asked IT to supply me with a, a license ID uh, to be able to, so I can give you the different flavors on how to do this on different platforms. Uh, so right now, today, we're stuck with on my Mac, but the IDs are the same. It's not any different, except the way your interface with the application is going to be different. On the Mac, it's actually easy, but it has limitations. It doesn't give me a full report like on a Windows unit. Uh, we get to see what that means in a minute. So that means I have to dig for values, <laughs> okay? So in here, uh, I wanna do a view and I wanna grid the grid dots. I wanna see the grid right here. So I see what I'm drawing, right? Uh, so this is like any other CAD drawing here. Uh, so I'm gonna put my components right here. Uh, so the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go ahead and say draft component. And in my case, notice now I have all sorts of devices here, right? Uh, so I could uh, go ahead and use a resistor. So this is all alphabetically sorted. So I can go ahead and use a resistor, say, okay. Uh, this would be my collector resistor. And this would be my base resistor, for example. And I'm just gonna hit escape. Otherwise it's gonna keep wanting to enter resistors. Uh, next, I'm gonna put a transistor here. So a draft component and transistor. Let's see if we can get a transistor will be an NPN transistor right here, bipolar. Notice this is a generic one. It has no characteristics. Uh, so you see the word Q like I drew it. it it's used a lot for transistors uh, to identify transistor. So I'm going to call it my transistor or my BJT, right? So I'm just going to say, okay, here, I'm going to show you how to change the naming on these. So notice it wants to draw another one. I'm just going to hit escape. That's all I want. Now I'm going to connect all of these and put a power supply. Okay, so um, I'm going to draft wires. Okay, and I'm going to go from here, line up here, go to the base. I'm going to go from here, collect the to the collector. I'm going to go from here down, and I'm going to put some sort of a, a ground there. Hit escape. Um, then wires. Again, go from here. I'm just going to go about this much. Go here. 
go here, hit escape. Uh, let's go ahead and get a power supply. And draft component. And I'm gonna go down here where it says voltage. And notice I get a plus and a minus. So by default, this is a DC. We can actually work its characteristics if needs be. I'm just gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna put it right here. Notice again, if I move my mouse, it wants me to drop that second one in here. I'm just gonna hit escape. Where did you find the power supply again? Uh, so the power supply, so if you do draft component, and right, you just so components. Yeah, you just go and pick voltage. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm following along with my spice. Oh, okay. Well, this is recorded. Just just yeah, just pay attention to what I'm doing. So you can go back later on and go back through the recording. Just like when I write anybody has taken me for programming here. So a lot of times when I write programs or C or Java or Python, I like to do things live, just like I'm doing here. So you get to see how things are developed. The problem is sometimes if you try to follow me, I might go a little faster than what you're doing and then I lose you somewhere. It's better just follow me, take notes, and then go back to the, because I record everything. Go back to the recording and rerun it based on what you're seeing. I think that's a better strategy. Now, if you're quick, and you can quickly do the two together, all power to you, but I suggest the other way around. So what do you think I'm gonna do now? I'm just gonna go ahead and draft wires, right? So I'm gonna connect all this stuff together. I'm gonna to go from here, go over here, and then take this wire, go from here, go over here, and go here. Now you would think this is done, but it's not. To run a simulation, listen carefully, in LT Spice, you always need a reference point. So you need to create a ground, even though it's implicit here that this line here where the minus is will be typically your reference point as a ground, which means if you put your multimeter and you're measuring voltages relative to this point, that's what you're doing. So if I have a multimeter, I'll put the black lead here, the common, and then I move my red lead here, measure VCE, um, move my red lead here, measure VCC again, right? I could move my red lead here and measure VBE, right? So I can go, I have a lot of points I can measure by keeping one wire in one place, but just move uh, the red wire as my probe. And it gives me a quick, quick overview of what's going on and if everything is in, in place. Uh, sometimes if you want to do calculations of the current, then you can take your black probe and put it right here. And the red probe here, you get VRC, you get R IC out of it indirectly. Unless you want to disconnect this wire here and put an amp meter, then you can measure the current. And uh, uh, that's labor intensive. <laughs> and if the circuit is already on a circuit board, forget it. You're not going to be able to do it that way. So you have to imply the current. So everybody give me a check mark. You know, if it's on a circuit board, you're not going to disconnect anything to measure current. Now, if it's on a breadboard, yeah, I mean, if you want to use an ammeter, you're more than welcome to do it. But you're going to add more um, issues with the circuit when you break it up. You've been in the lab and you've seen the headache. You break up something, you could have a disconnection. You can include noise from the connection. The more you tamper with the circuit, the worse it gets for you in terms of measurements. Fortunately, we're not in the lab, so I'm giving you all those bad scenarios while, while I'm here. Does that make sense? So just to let you know that I expect those to happen, you know, if you're doing this in a lab, right? Uh, it, it's just reality. Right? Nothing works ideal. You introduce noise, you introduce disconnection, you introduce a whole bunch of other things. Now, for LT Spice to work, you need a ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, go ahead and do a draft, just a wire here from here to here. Just hit escape and I'm gonna stick a ground here. Uh, let me see if I could stick a ground. Uh, let me see here. I don't think it's a bus step. No, I'm sorry. It's been a while since I've used this. Uh, let's see. 
uh, see if it, we can find it here as GRD. Let me just type here, ground. So you could do a search here. So it's not, we, we don't have it here. Um, cancel that. So that's not gonna come out of that. We'll find it. Uh, it's going to be draft. Ah, here you go. So let me go back and show you what I did. So right mouse click, draft, net name. And I'm gonna pick a ground right here. So the ground I'm gonna pick is this one. I'm gonna say, okay, and I'm gonna stick it right here. Okay, you need to have that. So notice it's asking me to put it somewhere else again. I'm just gonna hit escape. You need to have this for, for, the, uh, for the simulation to run. Now for the simulation to run, you need values. So for this one here, this is a resistor. We can modify the value here. And notice I just right mouse clicked where R1 is and call this one RC, hit okay. Do the same thing here, call this one RB, okay. Do the same thing here, right mouse click here and I'm gonna call this one VCC. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna call this one my BJT. So it has a label, my BJT. This is a, this is not uh, um, a standard transistor. Everybody give me a check mark to understand. I'm gonna be putting beta myself in this transistor, okay? Now, if you wanted a standard transistor, right? So if you wanted a standard transistor, then you could do this. Let me show you where it says NPN here, right mouse click. Uh, believe, let's see here. Ah, not this one, but this one where it says arrow right here. Pick a new transistor. Notice it has NPN as my default. If I wanted to pick a transistor, then this will be the types of transistors that I have. Let me make it bigger here, show you the issues. Let's say um, in the lab, you have, this is what's on the inventory. You have a 2N222, then you have a Fairchild. I think we have those. <laughs> Hang on a second. Ah, the 2N3904. That's probably the one you used in the lab. And that has a beta forward of 300 almost, BF here. Notice these beta forwards are your actual beta that I use for the calculations. 200, 300, they're pretty big, 230, uh, 550. So I went through this whole list to look for a 50, couldn't find one. So I have to create my own, okay? So as you can see, in here, uh, we've got issues. But notice the notation or the syntax used to model a transistor. Everybody give me a check mark. You see that where it says dot model, dot model. Everybody see that, right? That's how it models. So what does it do? So a dot model indicates that this 2NN222, 2N22222 is a model of a device and it happens to be an NPN. So notice that all NPN transistors. So it has a label to N222. So the label type, and then notice parentheses here under the parentheses, what do you think? Well, we've seen beta. So it has other characteristics that are called attributes of that transistor. So if you go to the spec sheet, you're gonna find these attributes in the spec sheet of the transistor. At this stage, we're only interested in beta. Eventually later on, we're gonna look at more stuff, okay? Uh, especially when we get into AC analysis where we need the internal impedance and so on. So, great. 
So can I use the same format to create my own transistor? Yeah, yeah, you could do a dot model, my BJT, NPN, open parentheses, BF equal 50. So I'm gonna use the same notation for that. So instead of saying this, my transistor here, so uh, right here, okay? We're gonna create a model for this transistor. So I am going to go over here. Oops, that's okay here. And let's see. Where it says spice directive. Everybody see where it says spice directive? This is really where you set up your models, okay? And I'm gonna go over here, spice directive dot model and my BJT. So make sure you're, you're, you're using the same name as the label, NPN and then BF equals 50. Then it's gonna ask you, I'm gonna put it right here. So this here already identifies that my transistor has a beta forward of 50 and it's an NPN. Everybody give me a check mark. You saw what I just did here. I actually set a value for the transistor. Okay, good. And notice the, the, the syntax. It's a model. What is its label? What type is it? And what characteristics or attribute does it have? Notice I chose just one attribute. It's a very simple transistor. I'm not worried about anything else other than that attribute set to 50. Good. Now, how about these guys? Can I set their attributes? I don't need to model these. These, I can go straight here where it says R and actually put the value here, 2.2K. Put a capital K for 10 to the third. And then this one here where it says R, do the same thing here. And that would be 240, what is it, 240K? And the same thing for this one. For this one, we're gonna put 12 volts. Don't put K, okay? <laughs> that would be 12 kilovolts, okay? You can fry everything, we're not doing that. There you go. All right, everybody give me a check mark so far that all components have been configured and we're ready to run this. So it's a matter of running this. Um, so to do this, now you need another, something similar to a model. And I'm just gonna right mouse click anywhere here where it says draft, uh, uh, spice directive. And I'm just gonna type under spice directive dot OP. So I'm gonna spend time, we're almost running out of time, explaining what dot OP is versus dot transient, dot versus dot this, this, this. Dot OP means operating. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm just gonna put it below here. So I have a list of things associated to the circuit. So if you don't have this, you're not gonna be able to run, notice the person running here, the, uh, the, um, the, um, the simulation. So you need to have something to tell the simulator what it's supposed to be doing. And in this case, operating points. Okay, that's what OP is. Everybody give me a check mark. This is the next component you need to have here uh, to, to make sure that you're on, a, on the right track. I think I have everything I need. Now I'm ready to go. So I'm just gonna hit run. And notice I get this window here. And let me make it bigger. It just doesn't show anything right now. However, it gives me the possibility to start measuring, which I couldn't do before. Now, if I take, notice my mouse now changes, changes into a probe and it's the red probe, which means the black wire is on the ground. That's my reference. Everybody give me a check mark. So I'm gonna be measuring based on ground versus ground. Everybody understand what that probe is gonna be measuring. If I know that, then I can deduce currents, can deduce voltages. All right, so. Well, let's measure VCE. I'm interested in VCE. I want to know. Here he is. Uh, we got VCE. Something is wrong. And let's see. 
we should be at around six volts and I'm getting around 1.6. So that means my transistor here may not be modeled properly, right? So um, can I measure current here? Notice if I move my mouse here, it's gonna tell me what the current is. And if I measure this, I can see that my current, which is in blue, so if I highlight here, is about 4.6 milliamp. So I'm way off. So something is not right. Everybody give me a check mark, you understand? So something isn't right here. I'm not getting the same results. So let's go ahead and try to fix it. Let's see what's going on. And I guarantee you it's my transistor modeling. That's an issue. And I got 12 volts. I got 2.2K, 240K. Uh, let me make sure everything else is fine. My BJT, BF forward is 50. Do we need to set a barrier potential maybe? A what? Um, like uh, the 0. 0.7 volts. Do we need to uh, set? If I measure that, so if, if uh, it should, right now this transistor is in operation. If I measure that, that's already point, it's a little over 0. 0.7, you see this? Okay, okay. Right there, do you see that? So the transistor yeah, is yeah. actually working. It, it's not responding the way I want it to. Does that make sense? It's got the wrong transistor. So as a matter of fact, if I delete this and go to my transistor and put something else here, pick a transistor, right? And let's say I pick the 222. This will saturate the heck out of it. Let's prove that, okay? And so now I don't need to do a dot model since I'm picking a 2222. Everybody see that? Okay, so remember that has a beta of 200. So let me run this. And you get to see that VCE here is almost gonna be zero. So right in here, I'm just gonna measure here. Yeah, really small VCE, 121 millivolts. That's almost zero. This transistor is definitely saturated. Does that make sense? So if I measure the current, I'm gonna be at max in terms of current. And let's go to IRC here. And I'm at 5.39. Remember our calculations? Let's go back to here. And I see if saturation was 545. So almost at saturation. So we are within the limit of the load line, but we're at saturation. Is that everybody with me so far? Because of the transistor yep. that I picked. So I really need to pick the transistor that has a beta of 50. My mistake is in my modeling, I made a, something, uh, some, some uh, bad thing there. So that I know exactly what the issue is. So all I do is pick one, an existing transistor, that I know will saturate the heck out of it because beta is way up, you okay? Uh, so now let's go ahead and close this here. And let's go back and see if we can actually model this uh, differently. So this here is the transistor we have. So let's see if I can redo this, dot model, healthy spice, dot model. And that would be my BJT NPN. Maybe I didn't have to do NPN, but that's okay. Uh, BF equals 50. Let's see if that will uh, fix the issue. And is there some built-in internal resistance to VCC? So uh, I'm wondering if that's a problem. Yeah, this should be, no, no, no. That's not the problem really, because if I go to advanced, uh, the internal resistance right here, uh, if it, if this, the default will be zero. So see where it says series resistance, series capacitance. Uh, this is when we get into more, especially at higher frequencies, uh, things can change, especially when you have capacitance. You definitely have it in the uh, in the power supply. 
uh, you're going to definitely have series resistance um, and so on. But that is not frequency dependent. This will be. So yeah, so the issues could happen. But right now, we're just using an ideal power supply. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, let me see. I think my error is in picking this one here. And maybe here, just remove that. And let's see if that will work. And just removed the NPN there. Let's see, let's see if this will work. And let's run it. Ah, missing. So no, it's not going to work. Uh, so let me just uh, fix this. It's been a while, so let me just. And let's pick a transistor for now, just so it, it brings it back. There you go. Uh, so don't delete this, but I would like to put maybe pick a transistor. Maybe here I need to pick a transistor that is, so we're running out of time. Uh, I will complete this video for you anyway. Everybody give me a check mark. So just in case we run out of time, I will redo this video specifically with this example using the uh, uh, custom transistor with beta 50. So it's just a matter of seeing why it's not, it's not allowing me a custom here. So I'm just gonna say, okay, for now, um, maybe this needs to be called my BJT. There you go. Maybe this is what, what needs to be done right here. All right, so maybe this will work. So let's see what happens. All right. And I'm going to get my probe over here. Ah, okay, it's working. So where it says the N2255, replace it with my BJT as the label for the transistor. That's where I made the mistake. Okay, everybody with me so far? So that command line is basically creating a new model and you're selecting that model. Exactly, exactly. And now notice that VCE is 6.86. Uh, what was VCE? We had 6.83, right, in our calculations. So we're right there. Let's measure IC right here. So IC 2.33. So and our IC was 2.35 million. So we're right there. Let's measure IB. And let's go over here. And if I go to IRB, I get 46.68 microamp, pretty close to 47 microamp. So has everybody seen now? Yeah, you're going to get slight differences in your measurements versus what you calculated, because this is a model, right? Or it's as if you're in the lab. But you noticed here that the few things that I had to do, the shenanigans basically, is to make sure that where it says to N222, for example, as a standard transistor, that's where you needed to put your label. So that way, this is correct, the model. So this links to this transistor. Otherwise, it doesn't link to this title. You can type whatever you want here. You could call it T1, and it's not going to affect the circuit. You with me so far? The top label is not going to affect anything. It's the bottom label, which is the value of the transistor. So let me run it again just to make sure. And let me make this bigger here. By the way, I will show you later on what to do with this here screen to put scales on it, to do a whole bunch of things. So for now, let's measure Again, this one, 6.86, good. So as you can see, uh, if I want to measure VCC, I can measure right here. And you can see VCC is the blue one here. That's 12 volts. Do you see that? Okay. Uh, if I want to measure current, then you put your probe right here. Notice the instrument changes to, to something with an arrow. That's an M meter. So I could use that. And I can go back here and click on the label. You don't need to worry about this here unless you're just measuring one thing. Now, if you click here again, it will remove VCC or remove VCE. You just have to click on it twice. And the only thing we have here is IRC. 
And notice here, it gets given you a scale. You can move your mouse here and then zoom in if you want to, or I simply click on IRC at the top, gives me a value. Okay, and that's 2.33. If I'm measuring IB, uh, whereas IB will be here, that's the blue one, 46.68. All right, so we're right where we calculated. All right, so I hope everybody learned a lot of things in terms of how to evaluate a common emitter of this manner of this circuit. And then, all right, so here's the other objective. What happens again if you replace this transistor with a 222? Well, we just did that. What happened? Let's see your answers in the text chat. Let's say I take out the 222 that I had in the lab and put it in here. Will the circuit be, will the QS endpoint be in the middle like we have right now? Step up in text chat, or you can, you can use your mic. We saw what happened. So if we change the transistor? Yeah, and, and you use the 222 transistor, the 2N222. Well, then you, you, we saw what happened. That it was super saturated because- Yeah, yeah. Yeah, too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so does everybody see the relationship now between this circuit and the actual transistor you use here? Right? Okay. So the higher the, uh, to the higher the beta value, the easier it is to saturate it. Exactly, because you remember, IC is tied up to IB, right? Yeah. So it does a does a higher beta value also make it more sensitive to cut off? Like, so like would a higher beta value mean well, that's we're, we're, more optimized? to see this in an analysis, you know? Uh, so again, what is cut off? Think about it. That means IC is zero. So beta is not into play here necessarily. Something else is going into play. So how can you get, I see go to zero. Uh, not have enough voltage at the base to clear uh, BBE. Okay, that's one. What else? Increase RB to the to the value that would get it down to that. Yeah, because you'll have going to have very small IB very which means it will lower IC as well, the relationship between IB and IC. Very good. Or we could take the transistor we already had. And if we wanted to saturate it, we could make RB a lot smaller. Exactly. Okay, good. Now you're analyzing. Now you're starting to see the relationships. Does everybody see what the objectives of these things allow you to visualize and actually get a feel and a sense of what the circuit, how it's going to behave. Now, you know, you could play this any, any, any way you want. So take this model, and what you will do is start playing with the values now of RC and RB and see what happens. Now, if you play with RC, you're going to shift the whole load line. It's going to be a totally different load line. You with me so far? Because your IC of saturation is going to be up or down depending on the value of RC. We've seen that the IC of saturation is VCC divided by RC. Do you agree? Okay. And then we're gonna introduce RE and see what happens. Well, RE plays a dual role. It plays a, a role on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the circuit. That's why we refer to it as a feedback as well. And that makes a hell of a difference because now the input depends on the output. The output depends on the input. We already knew the output depended on the input, but what if the input itself depended on what's going on on the output side? That's feedback. Okay. So we're going to meet again. We're going to do the circuit again or something similar with RE. And then we're going to go into a circuit with Chaz. Uh, let's say we have we want to have better control over VB, then we'll do voltage dividers. Uh, then we can build circuits. We have better control over what the outcome is going to be, especially when you're going to have multi-stages amplifiers. You really, 
want to do, to, to do this as smoothly as possible. So right now we're doing the fundamentals. All right, so, so what if I had to use the 2N222 and I had no choice? Well, you could, you could play with RB for that case to get things back into shape. Do you agree? Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. All right. So I will see you. Hopefully you learn a lot. And I will see you again when? Um, Thursday, right? Yep. Yeah. So also uh, the, uh, the homework that was like those six questions, is that then I guess, you know, what's supposed to be due uh, Thursday? Because we didn't go over that today. Okay. Uh, is it due Thursday? I, I'm not sure myself. Okay. Hang I, on. I did them. I honestly did them last night thinking that they were due today. Okay. But, well, let me see. Where's, where's, where are they under assignments? I don't think there was an official assignment created for them. It's homework one, right? No, I think homework one is the one from like last uh, semester. And it was like, yeah, much longer. And you said that you wanted like to create. Right. Yeah, so which is 2021. Yeah. Which one you're looking at? Uh, this was, it was mentioned in the last lecture. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The stuff that I gave you to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Thursday, we could do some of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to make sure I was still like, you know, like not getting lost or anything. Right. No, 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 no. So how'd you do with that? Um, I had to do some looking around, uh, mainly because, you know, many, many of the tutorials and even the stuff in the book was beta dependent. And yet, you know, in those six problems, beta was never given you know, because VDBs are independent right but i eventually once once i realized that for those um you know ic is you know extremely close to ie then i was able to figure it out exactly exactly that good. was like the final barrier good yeah we, we we will get to a point where we need to do some approximation to break a barrier somewhere does that make sense with circuitries like these yeah one of them uh there are a lot of assumptions we use with amplifiers one of the main ones is IC almost equal to IE. There's some others as well, all right? So we get to see that, especially VB, uh, when you have a voltage divider. Uh, a lot of people try to view, avoid Thevenant. <laughs> so they go straight voltage divider. Uh, so again, we get to play with all that sort of thing. So remind, remind me on Thursday to do some of those examples. Remember, I, I wanted to do that. Uh, but luckily, it's not due. So none of that is due. It's just for you to warm up and get used to everything. Excellent. Good. Gotcha. Excellent. Uh, all right. So any questions before I let you loose? I uh, got my. I got the same circuit you did, and I got the same answers, but it doesn't let me do the probe thing. It just, like, prints them out. Okay. For you, it printed a, an actual report, right? Yeah, it gave me like a little sheet. Yeah, yeah, that's even better, actually. I, I wish <laughs> I could do that on my Mac. I, I couldn't get it to do that. Oh, so there's no, there's not like a probe option? No, there is a probe option somewhere, uh, but uh, on, I'm not sure. I'll have to use, I haven't used the Windows version. As you can see, my machine is a Mac. So I am sure there's a probe version somewhere. But the fact that you're getting a report, that's excellent. I wanted to get that instead of probing around. Uh, yeah, the, the default run on Windows is very uh, concise because it's literally just like, uh, you know, seven to eight values, which is just saying like um, your IRC, your um, you know, your IRB. Right. You know, so basically all just all these values and it's just, you know, very in like a very compact window. You, right. you don't get the graph. Okay. I was really impressed with Spice, way better than Circuit <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like yeah, it. so much better. <laughs> Much easier, much more compact too. So, so good, good. All right, so fantastic. So I'm gonna pretty much leave soon to go to campus. All right, so see you guys again and gals and at uh, Thursday. All right, yeah. see you then. Yeah. Let me.